Hello everyone and welcome back to Don 10. We've got some more Vegapunk content for you and we're gonna have probably about another 16 to 20 more videos of Vegapunk. Hopefully facing a bunch of different matches now that OPO 7's out. I actually had a very good plethora of decks to play against in the tournament today so I was pretty excited about that. We got another tournament tomorrow so I'm gonna record some more videos but we decided to go second because we won the die roll. We took a mulligan and we found a Lilith off the top which was able to find me Frankie and or I'm sorry Lilith found me something and then I was able to play the one drop searcher that found me um, was it Pythagoras or whatever. So we were able to get a couple cards there, replacing the two that we played with more things. And our opponent just goes 9 into lead, looking at their life, we take it. It is the zero drop. Unfortunately, that was not one card down, which would have been fantastic if it was in the other order. So now it's our turn. We're on 4 Dawn turn. Our turn's pretty simple here. We're just going to go 6 with Lilith. Play the stage out and either heal or play out a Shaka. And I choose I think I choose to put Shaka in life here because if they want to throw it at the bottom of my life, I'm okay with that. That's what I was thinking about for a second there. I'm like, and eh, do I really want to put this one? Because then they might just throw whatever I put in there to the bottom of my life. And I'm okay with Shaka going to the bottom because it's a blocker. Though they could play the game out where they could get to tend on turn and trick me into keeping the Shaka there and then ten mom me. I do misplay in this game later, and you'll see it, and I'll point it out later. Um, not the end of the world. Definitely could have played it smarter, but didn't really change the course of how the game turned out. So, not the worst misplay on my part. But he just goes seven in the lead, and we just take it, putting out the the Shaka blocker and now I can because I'm at one life already which is pretty good about this deck is I can Amaru giving a buff to Lilith and then attacking or and resting the Sanji and then attack down the Sanji which is pretty good here I just wish I had a dope I wish I had a Luffy to do this for me so that I could go at life but unfortunately this is the way we have to do it because we don't have the Luffy because I could have just like healed with, healed with leader ability and then used Luffy straight out of hand for 5 Don, which would have been kind of cool. Um, but I really like Luffy in this deck a lot because the Luffy pretty much always has value. As long as I'm playing it smart, Luffy should always have value. Um, also, popping Kikinojos just to get that effect out of the way for 1 Don is very effective. So our opponent decides to take, and they don't get a trigger, I believe. Yeah, so no trigger there. And then we put a uh, per, per, Pythagoras. I always mess up his name, man, but Pythagoras, we put him into life. Because we're thinking, okay, if he attacks the Lilith, we'll let it go. If, he, if she attacks life with, like, Rush Anel. Or not Rush Anel. Yeah, she's on Rush Anel down turn, so she could Rush Anel me here. And then I'll just put the Pythagoras in play and then let that get attacked down and continuously attack with Shaka and unrush Shaka at my hand step. But here she plays 7 Mom instead, and I let her heal one because I don't really want to trash any cards out of my life just yet. Um, I've got a turn to go down as much on life before she's... So like, not this turn, not the next turn. So two, two full turns for me, one, one and a half turns for her essentially before I have to start worrying about 10 mom. So here we're thinking about how we're going to, like what we need for leader effect plus what, what, and then I can, usually I'll do this in my head and then I'll be able to start attacking because you always want to kind of attack before you start doing stuff, generally. And in this deck you really want to attack before you start doing anything. Takes it, no trigger, fantastic. We've kind of lucked out with Katakuri not hitting a lot of triggers in this match. Not gonna lie. I'm quite thankful for that one. So she takes it, no trigger again. I'm like, man, I am lucking out, but 
on top of it. She's got a stacked hand. I can't imagine what possibly is in her hand to where she hasn't triggered anything out. And I'm thinking to myself, do I put another life into play or do I put out the Luffy? And I think to myself, you know what, I'm just gonna, like, Ahead of time, I'm going to predictively put this Luffy into play just in case Kikunojo or another Sanji decides to make an appearance. That way I can pop it, like I can attack and then pop it, which is kind of neat. Because if I put something in life here, then the Luffy effect is no longer in play and I'm kind of banking on my opponent attacking my life when I have a rested character. Not a very good um, line to bank on. And here comes the Kika Nojo. So I preemptively thought this might happen, whether it's Kika Nojo. You know, 8 cost Katakuri would have punished my play a little bit, but it is just a, a 1 cost 6k body at that point, which isn't terrible. And she chooses to go 10 at lead, and instead of looking at my life and setting it to the bottom, she chooses to look at hers, which is neat. And then we just trigger it out. So one thing I really love about Vegapunk is every single body just triggers itself out. It's amazing. So then she goes eight. And I think to myself, is it worth blocking here? Should I take it? Should I counter out? Cause I could, I could just block with Shaka, counter up to nine with like a zero cost event plus another card, or I could just take it. And I'm thinking to myself here, now this is one of the two kind of ish misplays that I make here. Now I'm thinking to myself, do I use this trigger to KO the Kikinojo, or do I throw it in the hand and then use it to pop the Kikinojo while still being able to attack with my other Luffy, saving it for another thing. But then we draw a Kingdom Come and I'm like, nope, we're saving that. More than likely we're gonna save that for Tenma. I only run two Kingdom Comes, so I really need to be sparing. Now this is the mistake I made, right here. Putting that Luffy into life, because I know Ten Mom's coming next turn. That was a huge misplay on my part. I should have just put another body into play, because I know I'm trying to board clear this turn, right? So instead of healing, what I should have done was put the Luffy into play, used, it, used the summoning sick Luffy to pop the Kikunojo, attack down the mom with everything else that I can and then call it a day or call it a turn you know so now I have to sit here and go three nines into this mom then pop the Kikinojo anyway but then after I after that I started thinking to myself well I can just wait till next turn to pop the Kikinojo maybe get a few more resources from my opponent, but putting that Luffy back into life this turn was a huge misplay on my part. Huge misplay. Like I said, it didn't change the course of the game, but I gave my opponent unnecessary value, and that is a big whiff into Katakuri. When you do that, when you know they're gonna be on 10 drop turn next turn, they haven't triggered anything out, you know their hand is probably stacked full of everything that you don't wanna see being their opponent. So here I'm just like, well, I should swing this five, rip a rip a card from hand at least. And then we will go to the end step and unrush Shaka. And we pass it on over. And now next turn, if our board stays intact and they keep coming at life, we're going to be able to do some serious things. So here, she's more than likely just dropping 10 mom. Yep. Now see, I think my opponent should have tried to attack my board a little bit, like go oh, Katakuri into Lilith, um, Kikinojo into like one of the six drops, and then play mom and just not attack my life. Cause that way you drain some cards from hand and then, you know, get the life out of there. But I really shouldn't have put that Luffy there. I should have just kept the Luffy in hand or put it out and then used its effect to pop the Kikunojo. So here will Kingdom come the big, the big mom. And she just didn't understand that that's what it was doing. And because I'm at zero life, I didn't have to trash. And so now I'm like, well, I need to 
probably stop healing at this point and just because I have Shaka in play. So as long as this doesn't get blown up, we're in a pretty good spot. I'm gonna stop putting life, in, or stop using cards to put into life. I'm gonna actually just continuously put, apply pressure to the board. Um, if we have another Luffy, it's a little less sketch, but I think I'm gonna have to go like eight with Luffy. It's like either seven or eight. So we go six, okay, that's fine, I guess. We have three more characters to attack with, but I was thinking we could go a bigger attack with Luffy since we're gonna use it anyways, but that's fine because we got a 2k out of hand. We're gonna pop the Kikunojo, allow her to heal one, and then I draw a card. She should have healed one here. So maybe that was my opponent for on my my opponent's bad for not healing one here. She should have healed one. So that that was a misplay on my my opponent's part here. So let me go six. All right, and then we we pay three to play out a Lilith. So, a little sad my opponent didn't heal there. So I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, and what am I going to take? More than likely a 2k at this point. It's either a 2k or if there was a Shaka blocker in there, we'll probably take that. We could find another Luffy. The Luffy doesn't seem as great right now. It's just a 1k, 6k body. So, finding the event, the one cost event, we added the I require help uh, event card that gives 3k because the trigger allows me to play a 5 cost from the trash which allows me to loop Luffy's in and out which is kind of neat also if you've dealt with a Shaka I can put that back into play very good because it allows me to essentially have a life and a blocker guaranteed if there's a Shaka in the bin so all around a good suggestion uh, that one was suggested to me by someone in the comments of my Betty video, I think it is, the last one. So our opponent is thinking about what they're going to do, and at this point, Ten Mom is not great. It's not going to help them win, unless their last two lives are just absolutely cracked. So then she sends 11 into lead, instead of attacking down any of my board. And I'm thinking to myself, I do have enough in hand to counter out of this, but if she rush aces, either way, I lose my Shaka. So I should pro- and she only has five down left, so if she does rush ace, it's like, not the end of the world, I can just use the one cost event to get out of that attack, put my leader up to eight. So just block with Shaka here seems better. I am losing one attack towards life next turn, so if- for some reason they heal this turn we're in a bit of trouble but she just passes it on over and so now I believe we top deck an ace here and if we top deck an ace here I'm probably just going five I'm probably just sending a bunch of fives and then the ace so let me send five with Lilith Send five with Lilith again. She takes no trigger. Then we send six into life. So this means I drew ace for the turn. And she pro I think if I remember correctly, she dumps a zero cost event with a card to get out of this attack, which means she'll have two cards in hand so that this, this ace is going to get through. Yep, and so that this 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 new list, with, I, I got rid of the gym bays and I added the new or the one cost event, and I added the girly that can't be KO'd if I'm at less life in battle. I love that one. So then we drop the ace, we send ace. She's only got two cards in hand. That's game, folks. Hit that join button, hit that sub button, leave a like, leave a comment. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for stopping by.